Everybody, let us in the chat for returning guest, uh, melee player, and uh, Smash Bros. tournament organizer, Dr. Louis Lemus, PhD. Louis, welcome back to Folkwise. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. It's a joy to be back with you. Oh. I'm always a joy to see you. Oh, thanks, man. Okay. Uh, first question. Uh, is 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 that hairline like every every man in your family has it or are you just like are you just the hairline king special um i think my i think uh my dad definitely has some some nice hair so i'm i'm trying to hold on to it for as long as i can but i i, I would say my dad on um, my dad and then my my uh, mater, maternal grandfather both had nice hair so i i, I just uh, struggled i guess that's nice that's good you have you can grow some hair though I, I can, see you growing it back there. Yeah, I can. I my my. I'm getting. Uh, it's growing less up here and more back there. The older I get, and it's <laughs> it's it's going out in a blaze of glory. Okay. I took hey, like still rocking it. I though. took like a bunch of inches off uh, this summer, actually. Yeah, yeah. I I am getting the grays though. I am getting the grays. My grays are coming in curly. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be a swaggy old man. Um, okay. Uh, this isn't about me yeah. and my hair. Uh, it's about Louis and his hair. That's and and that's the cast is is our hair. That, <laughs> Shirley's got some great hair too. Got the blonde, got the blonde streak in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I attempt. So Shirley, your whole color palette is on point. Your whole color <laughs> they're the one who designed the, room, the color palette in the first place. The room, as it comes out to your chair, onto your shirt, your eye make everything is just one right. cohesive palette. It's all there. Cohesive Thank is you. their middle name. I don't think oh I know their goodness. middle name. What is your middle name? Catherine with a K. I'm oh. named after a gun. After a gun? Yeah. What gun? L like, you, like that is your your family story that that they literally said we named well, you after. Well, a, a so firearm. my my name is Shirley Catherine Shields. Um, and so technically I'm named after my two two maternal motherly figures. And a gun. Catherine is spelled with a K, so it's the SKS. The oh, oh got it. I was Do like, the, the Catherine oh. Shield is a gun. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Shield is a pretty bad. Yeah, list. Pokemon Gun and Shield. So I'm so upset that it wasn't Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Shield, and like the yellow version was Pokemon Gun. <laughs> um, that, that's when they make the American region. Oh damn! Oh damn! Yeah, that's the Texas Pokemon, is Pokemon Gun and Holster. Okay, let's stop giving <laughs> Nintendo free ideas, because they don't give us anything for free. Uh, <laughs> Super Smash Bros. People in chat, you might know as the game you played freshman year in college. You might know it as the game where Mario hits a Pikachu with a baseball bat. But I want to ask first, so so Louie, you've uh, dedicated a lot of your life uh, to Super Smash Bros. What, what, what do you say Super Smash Bros. is in general? That's such a good opening question, Dom. The opening oh, question was the hairline thing. thing. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, I, I guess that was like a, like it was like a preamble to put this. It was. It was. Um, I guess the first word that comes to mind it's it's a culture. Mm. Um, it, and and I guess I, the, the word that comes the reason that comes to mind is because it's it's a it's a game. What started as a game, but then produces something far beyond. What probably it intended to be, and and when you when I think of culture, I think of uh, the different types of people that have come together to play this game across um, different demographics across the world regionally, and especially in current times, you know, in the last like five seven years of being able to play online through Slippy, uh, I think it's just brought people together even more and has become a cultural phenomenon as well in terms of. Seeing it streamed to you know Twitch and seeing viewership grow and grow and the idea that people are thousands upon thousands of people are watching this game it competes with other games and viewership and the highest level um, you know we see sponsorship so to me it's a culture it's 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 um, what brings people together it helps people find other people who maybe they otherwise would not have met um, I think that's what I think about when I think about the game. Uh, rather than just viewing it as a game and describing it solely as a a game where you hit each other, you know, it's it's to me that's that's what comes to mind. How how did you start 
playing Smash, and you can go like the whole series. You can start yeah, with yeah, sixty four. Yeah. You can go with Melee, the one you played the most. But like, walk me through chronologically, like how you started playing. Sure. Well, it's funny your your opening statement of you, you might remember Smash as a game that you played as a freshman in college. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, that makes me feel so old. I was like freshman in college. I mean, I I, I was playing um, sixty four, and like you know, the day it came out, and, and by myself I'm the only child by myself at home you know right there just like that playing it and and having a blast with it and i remember just playing that just with like my my i grew up in an apartment complex and back then we we all just at an early age we're just already walking around the apartment complex not worried about um something bad happening or anything like that and we would go to each other's apartments and play and and just has the classic story of everybody thinks they're good because they can beat their friends. Um, and so that was like my early, early stages of that. And the reason that game really hit hard for me is because I, my first console was a Nintendo 60. Well, no, it wasn't, it was Sega Genesis, but my first like console, when it became like PlayStation or Nintendo 64, I, I went the Nintendo 64 route purely because that's just what my parents got me. Um, and I fell in love with the Nintendo characters. And Ocarina of Time is like my number one, literally probably my number one favorite game of all time. And I can't believe Nintendo would put a game together where all my favorite characters are in there. And you know, the, and the object of the game is to destroy each other. How amazing is that? Um, so it just peaked at, at the right time with like Pokemon, I was already into Zelda. I already loved, you know, all the Nintendo character uh, cast lists. And so it was, it was amazing to play. And I don't know, how, but that was like a long time ago. And then uh, I really got into um, Melee um, be a little bit later, probably like 2002, I think is um, really when I started playing it. Um, because, and I actually didn't really realize it had already come out. And I went over to my friend's house and he was like, hey, you know, did, like, have you played the new one? And of course, you walk in with that cocky you know, mindset, like, oh, of course, I was good at 64. Let me let me try Kirby. And Kirby is terrible in, <laughs> in, in Melee. Um, but, you know, Kirby's like one of the best characters in 64. Um, got completely wrecked and decided that I needed to start playing this as well. But I played it casually. I, I always tell people, I love playing Smash casually. I really do. Like, if, if I have no problem sitting down with a group of people who don't even know about competitive melee or competitive smash in general. Let's turn on all the items, eight player smash. Um, let's pick the most, you know, bizarre stage and let's just have fun. That to me is like a good time. I never, I feel like I never lost that. And sometimes I feel kind of sad, like when we have a smash fest and, and nobody really wants to do that. You know, I feel like like that childhood essence of like just pure joy of playing Smash just to play it um, is lost because of the competitive nature of it. I love obviously competition, but um, that was lost a little bit. So uh, I love Smash on all its shape and form, competitively, just playing it for fun, putting on wacky settings just to see, you know, what we could do, big mode, tiny mode, whatever it is. I loved always doing that too. Um, so started playing Melee, probably around 2002 but i didn't start playing it seriously until about 2005 2006 um when i started to see that other people were playing it seriously and uh, mlg or major league gaming was a thing that really caught my attention back in the day and uh, i was also working at gamestop during that time they were a sponsor of major league gaming and we used to play we used to have these little dvds that we put in a little crt at our at a counter and they would just be on loop advertisements and it would show like uh the competitions and i was like wow this is cool and then um i don't know how deep you want me to go with this but um Deeper. then that's when i started you know <laughs> <laughs> that's when i started learning about the competition of it and continuing on with that story of like okay people you always think you're good that's when I met one of my good friends who's he's a big in the uh, San Diego scene, um, SoCal scene now. His name is Michael Guy. Shout out to Michael Guy. Um, or his tag is uh, Baba Ganoush. He's changed oh, it now, but it's Baba Ganoush. Yeah. His current tag is Baba Ganoush. He commentates a lot in the SoCal scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, he walked in one day before I knew him. I was working and he was looking for games. And I was playing Smash. That's when I thought I, I wanted to get into competition. And he and uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I'll play with you. And, and then... He destroyed me. 
because you kept like dodging my hits in place and I never realized that you could spot dodge. What is a spot dodge? I didn't know that. I kept trying to hit him, but I just couldn't. Um, he introduced me to his one of his best friends. I introduced him to one of my best friends. Um, and we, as a group of four, just started grinding. We went to MLG, Anaheim, which is, I, I believe, the the one where the famous one where PC Chris won mm-hmm. um, at ten thousand dollars, which was at the time a huge amount of money. I don't think it was beaten for a while in terms of prize money. Um, <clears throat> and that's when I was really exposed to the scene as a whole. So that that's kind of like my beginning stages of competition, you know, before Bloomington and all that. What what year's and, MLG um, Anaheim? I think it's 2006. MLG Anaheim was 2006. Feel free to fact check me, but I'm pretty sure that's when it was. 2005 is when I was exposed to it through just like seeing it online, like the crude live streams that they would show, and I would actually follow it. This is like shout out to like Chillin' Dude. This is like shout. This is like early Isaiah Ken. A Mewtwo King, you know, um, like the early, early, where they would go on tour. This is like people you don't even know more anymore, really, like Korean DJ. I know he's in the documentary, but like during that time, like he was like one of the best players, but then, you know, he didn't really continue with it. Like those kind of OG, you know, um, husband and wife, like those, those players way back in the day. Um, and I was like, wow, man, these guys are so good. Um, and so we started grinding, went to the, our first, one of our first terms was MLG Anaheim. Um, yeah, and that that was that was a lot of that was kind of what started that fire of doing it. And then after that, we just kind of did more local tournaments. Um, and that was when you had to go on Smashboards and look for tournaments. That was before like Google Maps. We would print out the directions, drive to some random place in LA. And for SoCal region, that's when we used to go to the UCSD tri weeklies um, and go to the campus and play against people. That was that was when it was like it was very interesting to the work you had to put in to like get. Uh, a tournament. I just saw Mango do a clip on YouTube and he was just talking about like kind of she shared something as I'm re- remembering he kind of shared something similar to what I said is that like you would have to go to people's houses obviously we all know that story of playing but he kind of was sharing something similar to what I said where and like it would be more chill when you're playing online on Slippy it's like you're just grinding out games you're not like talking to somebody and it's like okay thanks you know GG's and you go on to the next game when you had to go to somebody's house, you might play for, and me and like the group that I just talked about, we might be like, let's get some pizza, or like, all right, I'm tired of playing seriously. Let's let's like all be Donkey Kong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's all be Donkey Kong, Pokemon ball, you know, po- Pokemon balls only, and we'll play on like you know Game and Watches level, where it's like super small, and you know, um, and uh, you know, and I'm not judging it one way or another, but it's definitely changed, and I and uh, and. I you know I definitely miss those days where you had to really grind it out to and and work to like go to people's homes and things like that. That's all pre Bloomington and uh, you know obviously I could talk more about that too. Well, can I can I can I ask for a follow up on something you said? Yeah. Talk talk about this uh, this like real this 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 is like a kind of universal experience that you've like alluded to. I want you to talk a little more for like people who aren't like super keyed into the smash scene but you like you know that feeling where you think you're good when you beat your friends because I, I i know i know that feeling i've heard a lot of people talk about it can you talk about like the process you go go through when you like you think you're good when you beat your friends and then sure sure yeah so the process is this you <laughs> you 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 play a, <laughs> you play a character and um you you somehow not somehow maybe almost Un, unbeknownst to your self own awareness you tend to play people who casually know the game and you destroy them because you perhaps know a little bit more about the game just enough more to just exploit certain aspects of the game to just completely destroy people um and what what happens is you that becomes your worldview you know and, and it's like it's a, it comes a, a cognitive fallacy as we say you start to make assumptions and generalize your perception of the world based on the limited evidence that is only around you um and so then what happens is like my friend who steps into that and bursts your bubble and comes in and demonstrates to you that, oh no, you're not hot shit. And you're, you're not, and there's, and as a uh, brand or homemade waffles will say, um, there's levels, there's levels, even at the highest level, there's even levels after that. And it's so true. And, and that's what I love about smash in general is that no matter what your skill level is, you can have fun in that skill level. If you're playing with people who are around that skill level, because even in that pocket of skill level, 
there's levels within that. And so you can always feel like you're doing really well. Of course, you can step out of that and get destroyed by somebody. And so you then what happens is somebody comes in, they burst that bubble, you realize you're not great. And then it's almost like, and then part is like, well, you have a choice. Do I just kind of, you know, grab my toys and go back home? Or do I, uh, as I think most smashers who stay in the community do, is do I go back to the grind and figure out what I don't know? Do I start to learn techniques? Do I start to learn how to adapt? So something that you have to do in the moment in any sort of competitive game, uh, any competitive match, which is adapting at any given moment in a best of five match, you have to do on the long long term as well. You have to adapt in the long term. You know, the meta is always changing. Always, always, always. Just when you think we figure out, now we got Donkey Kong winning, you know, winning competitions now. That's unheard of. That is unheard of, you know? And so the meta is always changing. We're always grinding. But somebody's always coming in to burst your bubble just when you think you got it figured out. And uh, you have to go back to the drawing board and put in just a little bit more of that extra work uh, to figure out, you know, how do I um, start to learn whatever it is, whether it be matchups or new techniques, what have you, to you know, push yourself up to the next level. Something I've always loved about uh, Melee in particular is uh, are the techniques. Because I think Melee sits in like a very special place. Uh, I, 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 I can go to my thesis later. I want to hear you talk about it first. But you talk about, like, <laughs> learning the matchup, learning the techniques. Can you talk about, like, uh, some of the things we have to learn to be good uh, at Smash, but, like, specifically Melee and how you learn them in your, like, career? I, I think what's funny is, like, just kind of talking about the mentality of it is um, – it's not like different from many things in life that you want to be good at. And, and when I say that is um, everything, everything requires work. All of it, all of it. Nothing, nothing is easy. Um, and uh, even like the highest level players at any given point in time will, if they don't continue that grind, if they don't put in the work, it will show. They will fall behind. And um, it might not happen right away, but it will happen over time. And so if you want to be better, if you want to be the best with anything, um, it, you, you can, there's no short way around it. You have to put in the work. And so um, with Smash, it's it's no, especially no different. And so the techniques, you know, I remember when we first learned about wave dashing in Melee, um, we were, my group was like resistant to it. I remember, again, I, uh, Mike, I'll shout out to my boy, Michael. Um, he, I, I don't know why this stuck in my head. He said to me, yeah, I know what wave dashing is, and I see how it could be useful, but I think I can get by without it. And as we all know, it is a fundamental technique, you know, and there's just no way that, that you could play the game at a higher level without knowing that. It's a fundamental technique, and at this level, it's a basic technique. And so um, that moment was just showing how, oh, like, and I don't think he was outwardly trying to be, like, resistant to it, but it just shows you, like, Oh my gosh like there's more work to us than just like going to up to the other person and punching you know their your their character like there's the the, the fundamental techniques such as like wave dashing out canceling things like that in, in modern times you know um shield dropping and and then all the mentality aspects of game you know it's you know smash all aspects of, all all the games of smash it's like been described as like playing chess you know you have to consider what your opponent's going to do and consider how depending on the three or four options that they might do because smash by the way is like freestyle it's like at any given moment uh, your opponent can choose one like spin the dial especially at the highest level spin spin the dial and could pick one of eight different moves or options as we call it and you have to adapt to all eight options and in certain scenarios sure there's guaranteed options but um, you're constantly having to adapt all the time. So even when you do know these basic techniques that I rattled off, um, you have to, there's the mental aspect too of putting in the time to um, be able to adapt to those experiences. Something I, I've, say to, I've said before too is like with Mango, I love, I love his play style. I think he's amazing. He's very unique. He does crazy things and he gets the crowd very excited with his combos. So and I haven't like talked to him about this, but from just my observation and what I know about the grind and putting in the work, is that 
when we see him do something insane and and maybe for a lot of us it's the first time first time we've seen it i can almost guarantee it's probably not the first time he's done it and and that's because he does put in the time and he does those crazy things that he does he does practice them and he does it at times when we don't see him maybe you watch his stream all the time and you do see it so when you do it see him at competition it seems like amazing but he he's amazing because he does put in the time and what may seem new to us he's been doing for a while i mean i i i know he loves to just kind of think on the fly but i know that a lot of those things that we see him do he's done many times before and so adapting grinding it out and and putting in the work is what's going to help along with having those techniques Charlie, can you read the the Wimbo scrim from chat? Because I think Louis it illustrates a point Louis is actually saying. Yeah, I I mean, can you explain Wimbo scrim screamed anyway? Um, uh, the chat. I don't even know what that is. What what is that a reference to? <laughs> Something that just uh, happened. Uh, Demon, my fave thing is when I accidentally do a combo. My friend asking in disbelief, "Did you just Wimbo scrim? Oh my god, you just Wimbo scrimmed me." But, so that, like, hypothetical example of what it's like to, like, play Melee, I think is, like, why I love fighting games. Because, and, and I think it's, like, like if okay. I accidentally wave dashed, whatever that is. But, but the thing is, the, 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 and the thing that, like, I think uh, Louis getting it, too, the thing is that, like, okay, so I started watching, like, like Twitch and everything for, like, speedruns first. Like, games done quick. And then I started watching fighting games but i loved how like the commentators were basically talking about melee like it was a speed run you know what i mean because like oh you see he wimbo scrimmed there and he took four uh four frames of a uh like less to get up and that's how he was able to ledge hog and i'm just like what are they seeing that i don't i want to be able to see it i want to be able to see the game <laughs> like they're seeing the game that they can be like that is a uh that's a a turnaround ledge hog wimbo scrim or or whatever uh shine shine stall you know and but i think mm -hmm. like what but but what you're getting at here is that like you 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 can you can like say these moves but like these the, the people who are good at the game have have done that a mil like yeah they've done that more times than 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 you could ever call it out like to themselves right yeah i've heard i think maximilian dude described fighting games like 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 uh like running like at some point like the person you're battling is your own personal best lap you know, mm -hmm. like more so than yeah. like, more so than the opponent, you're 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 up against your best time. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like PB splits for yeah. on a speed run. It, yeah, no, fighting games have splits, just they don't like display them. They don't they don't yeah. display them, but there are definitely like the idea of a split comes across, like you like you've been saying yeah. with how you have to practice. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and and and. The thing, you know, no hate to other types of fighting, 2D platform games, fighting games, but I just feel like what what sets Melee or Smash, I, I say Melee just because that's what I, I come, you know, my background is, but I love Ultimate and other Smash games as well. It, but it, even what, across all the Smash games, because there's such a freestyle nature of it, you can't pause and pull up the um, combo list. Um you can't, you know, it, it, it's not a game that's built on infinites uh, where, you know, in like, I think of like Marvel, you know, versus Capcom or something like that, where it's like, it's just a game of infinites, you know, whoever gets the first infinite or doesn't block at the right time and it's over already. Um, uh, and I know games like Tekken are a little bit different, but I just feel like with Melee, the, 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 it's like, it's, it really is like chess where it's like the options are so vast that you, a person can choose at any given moment. And I think the Melee community or Smash community really feels it when we are exposed to like a new option and it just blows everyone away. We're like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. Whether it be a character, just a whole new character choosing a different option or just like, you know, whatever it be, a fox. And suddenly we're just when we thought we got it all figured out and there were like in any given moment in the game, which which is like, there's so many unique moments um and and every given one of those unique moments there could be 10 different options that somebody chooses the 11th option that we've never seen before and it just ch it flips the game over on its head and we're like what the heck and i think that's why the game keeps going is because there's so much variety again i'm like i've been watching some recent I, I watch a tournament tournaments when i can and you know just seeing you know the dk's come rise up into the ranks now is just insane i was watching turn down for walt's video and 
it was just giving some amazing stats on how like DK is represented more than a lot of characters in the top like 50 rankings right now or top 100 rankings it's just like so insane right now it i i love the the comparison everyone makes about like how how many how many years are we 23 years mm -hmm. into this game's life or something and <laughs> And DK people figured out how to play DK as if to say like, "Hey, game right. got DLC. The game got DLC. Right, right. The game got DLC. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think, and I think, and I'm not exposed to the, the social media aspect anymore. But something, somebody I'm still also impressed with all the time too is like Aklo, and he plays Link. Is it like I guess he, I don't know if he calls it his secondary or not, but like his, his Link, like his, his counterpick. Yeah, like his Link is like insane as well. Like nobody plays link anymore and and then at, he's playing it at the highest level as a legitimate counter pick at one to one of the best players in the world the best player oh no i guess cody's the best player but like arguably the best like, player in the world that, right like that's insane <laughs> to me like to think that that he can play a link like that like that to me is it will always impress me as his axe but i mean that's just always you know, he's, he's always been impressive as you know so it's just it's just it's just a testament to that you know so when you're doing like uh, MLG Anaheim, when you're like grinding the game with with the dudes in San Diego, when you're like carpooling to LA for tournaments, yes. it's like uh, yes. 2006. You're in high school. Uh, no, I just graduated. Just graduated 2005. Okay. So 2005. Um, so I, at, when I was 16, so a junior in high school, I started working at GameStop, my first job, um, and I was like, man, this is gonna be the dream job. I love video games. This is like heaven. <laughs> um yeah quick side note with that yeah and <laughs> and it was it was it was actually pretty amazing and when i remember my first day just imagine that 16 year old kid i went to my boss and i said so um are we allowed to borrow games <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't resist day one i already asked and so they're like yeah of course and i'm like yeah like you know and they had a whole checkout rule and i was like oh this is amazing so anyways um and it was amazing and so that's so I started working at GameStop at 16 and I worked there for a year until like um, graduation. That's when I started getting exposed to it. My friend walks in the door around 2005, 2006, and then our friendship continues from there. And our group just starts grinding and we start meeting people um, and uh, smash boards and all that. Yeah. What, what were some of those early tournaments? Uh, the, the early locals. Oh, you talked about like going to like the big yeah, yeah. MLG Anaheim and seeing like. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that was insane. That was yeah, insane. Like ten thousand dollar pots, but like, what were like the early local tournaments like? The early ones were um, so. <laughs> we went to one in in Rancho Pinasquitos. Who a guy who, who his his tag is a tricleman, um, and he was a, a San Diego um, very respected uh, TO for the longest time. And then I think he went away for school. Um, and when he was like in middle school, and this might sound awkward now, but I mean, it's just the, the it's just the wholesome. It's wholesome at the end of the day. But he was like a middle school kid. I don't know what why his parents let him. Like they were out, and he and we were like you know post high school, and he was like I'm hosting a tournament at my house on Smashboards, and so his friends were there. And then uh, my friends came and he, he had like, he, was, he had like a two story house and we had like setups in different rooms <laughs> and he hosted a tournament and we played it there. That was really fun. And that was like a good group of people to meet. Um, shout outs to him. And um, the UCSD tribe weeklies are just a super, super classic one. Like anybody who's an OG in SoCal knows about those. Um, and so that was driving to UCSD's campus. Um, everyone hauling CRTs. I guess a memory of that I have is while we were waiting for the venue to open, we found some outlets outside like a dorm and plugged them in and we all started crouching on the ground and playing there. Um, and uh, because we were just, you know, so hungry to play, so we we're just waiting. And we went to that a few times. Um, the LA ones, I don't remember, like, I just know in LA, I remember we pulled out MapQuest and my buddy got his big, um, man, this is a good story. I can't even share this one. He got like he had like um like a big '80s type van. I want to say I don't I forget, but it was the kind of van where they had the the screen drop down from the middle and it had the AV ports in it, yeah. and we're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So we hooked up the GameCube, and you know the poor my buddy whose car he was borrowing from his parents drove, and the three of us we played while we were driving. 
and that was just amazing that was like a dream i know now people just play on their laptops or whatever but like i was like man we're driving to la to a tournament and we're playing on our way to the tournament that was amazing <laughs> on TV, TV. so we did that i uh, went to a couple la tournaments um and yeah i mean the classic everyone brought their their crt i remember we played in school gyms um we played at a rec center and uh ucsd was like the common like the dorm common area if i remember correctly uh we played at a community college my buddy hosted one at a community college so that house in rancho Venosquitos. um and then i hosted a, a couple tournaments at gamestop and i later left gamestop to go to game crazy which was rest in peace game crazy was an extension of a store called hollywood video mm. where you would you know like the blockbuster competitor um and i used to host tournaments at game crazy as well um i hosted a probably like two at gamestop and then another two at game crazy um maybe two or three i remember doing that when um uh the next smash game was coming out um so yeah that was that's kind of like the early tournaments that we did very you know, it relied on the community. It relied on using message boards to get together. But good turnouts, good turnouts. That's that's like uh, ventured into my origin story because in high school I worked at a Greek diner next to a Hollywood video. And when I like got off my shift, I would rent a movie like every night. That's that that's yeah. why I'm like this, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, with the technology that like kind of put video rentals out of business was like Redbox. And now that's dead. Yeah. I'm like, you can't even, the idea of even renting something now physically is just dead completely. It's all streaming now. Okay. So you, you mentioned a couple times something that is like a classic feature of, of the melee culture, which is hauling around a tube TV. Like, can you talk a little more about like, uh, smash players, but specifically melee carrying their CRT TVs around? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I'll, I'll first let me let me I want to I'm going to answer that. But I'm going to share like a memory that comes to mind right when you started talking. I, it's just very psychologist of me. And sometimes I just like to share like what when, the thing that comes to mind. Um, for Full Bloom Four, um, uh, you know it was Full Bloom Five. Um, that because at that time I was already in NorCal doing my postdoc at um, UC Berkeley, mm -hmm. and so I flew in to Bloomington and stayed with Alex Meyer. Shout out to Alex. Um, and on my way home, uh, I left, pre I left pretty much right after I was at the airport and there was a, somebody there who, who was getting on the airplane with their CRT. And I was like, I was like, oh man, that is so cool. You came with your CRT. Like it was his carry on. And I just thought that was so cool because I'm like, nobody knows me and that's fine. I, I, I don't care about any of that, but it's just cool to like. I went up to him and I was like, "Hey, my name is Lou. You know, I help run the tournament." And I was like, "I just think it's so cool." They like, like you obviously, I know what you were here for, you know, because the TV gives it away. And he was like, <laughs> uh, and he and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And like, we took a picture. I remember posting it to to Twitter, um, and um, I just thought that was so cool because that's how you know the Smash person out of the crowd. Like, like if if there if you're going to like any fighting game tournament or like evo um or something like that the smash person or the melee person is carrying the crt now it could be an ultimate person carrying you know a, a, a computer screen but <clears throat> the melee person is easily identifiable uh and so and maybe before ultimate came out and if it was a fighting game tournament where there's gonna be other games you knew who your crowd was so it's like this like badge of honor you know is, is to do that and to me, the CRT represents, it really represents the community's willingness to play this game. You know, it's, we have to haul this heavy thing in order to play our game. It, 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 it's, it's the commitment of it. And it's not convenient. It's not, it's not easy. Um, and, and, you know, when you go to tournaments, they usually try to entice you by saying you'll get $5 off your entry fee. Look, I would like to think that most people don't really care about the $5. Sure, it's nice. A lot of us don't have a lot of money. And it is nice. But I think, honestly, a lot of us is because it's just what you're supposed to do. 
like it's an it, it, you just feel like it's an obligation if i have my crt if it's small enough i'm gonna bring it and if I, i'm gonna bring it because it means more setups for everyone so we're i'm thinking beyond myself I'm thinking that I my hope is that everyone who's coming is going to do it. And so we're all sharing in this experience and it's only going to be better if we all bring our our equipment. I get $5 off? Sure, that's great, but I would rather I would rather keep the 5 bucks. You keep the 5 bucks if knowing that we would just have a better experience because there's more equipment. And I think that represents that it's a collective effort that we're all willing to take part in. So that's just to me is like amazing. And that you can then take your TV and go play in your hotel room or go play later, whatever, it doesn't matter. But it's just collective agreement that we're saying, we all want to have the best experience, so we're willing to bring this, even though we know it's cumbersome. Um, and as a TO, getting CRTs is one of the most stressful things. It's incredibly <laughs> stressful to, to acquire the equipment. And so knowing that you have people who are willing to do that, uh, whether even be at the smallest scale, like a weekly or bi-weekly tournament that we used to do, or the big tournaments like full bloom that is highly stressful um to acquire equipment um the, obviously the game cubes and stuff is difficult but what made it easier for our time when we did full bloom was that you know you could mod wheeze you didn't have to actually have the game itself like that's what kind of changed that made it a little bit more accessible the crts were still challenging and they've only become more challenging because goodwill specifically i think didn't realize how much they impacted uh, it's like if it was stocks, it's like Goodwill's decision to no longer uh, sell CRTs dramatically impacted the Smash scene in like a way that they didn't realize they had an impact on. I know the day they, I remember distinctly the day like they stopped selling them. I was like, oh no, where am I just going to get this now? Um, and so it's like, I don't, I just like an everyday life garage sale, I don't see them. It's just, it's something that's hard to acquire. Um, and so it's, it's just a, it's a symbol. It's like, like if you just had like a, some, and as I'm thinking out loud, somebody should put that on a shirt, just like the silhouette of a person holding a CRT. And if I was walking in a crowd and I saw somebody wearing that shirt, I would just give the gamer head nod. Like, I know, I know, because that's enough. That's enough. That image of somebody carrying a CRT is enough to know where they're coming from and who, and, and what they represent and the game that they're interested in. And you already would feel a connection with that person. I, I think it's Seth Killian from Evo or from Capcom who was talking about Evo 2013 when like Melee like won the fundraiser and made it in. And he was like, we need to find a thousand tube TVs. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> right, right. And, and that's only getting more challenging now. Of course, modern day, like um, a lot of tournaments, you know, uh, you know, People playing online that helps and stuff like that but at the end of the day we're still using the crts there's not a 100 percent, i think great solution yet um and there's a now there's there a are big companies reason too right oh for sure yeah, yeah because of that the game was you know originally ported for that and so it, it creates a delay when you play on anything that's that it's not meant for and it's such enough delay that it it changes the game dramatically. Don't let you don't let other people tell you otherwise. Um, it it does change it, it, it dramatically. Um, and 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 I'm speak I'm I'm speaking to the competitive nature of it. On the, just a practical fun level, I'm happily will con connect my my Wii or whatever to an HD TV and play with a little bit of lag. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But at a competitive level, you're looking for the edge at every level. And I want to answer the CRT question on another level too that I like talking about, which is the type of CRT is like also an art too. Yeah. Especially early in the early stages. Like having a CRT that like had the AV cables in the front. Oh my gosh, that was a gem. You know, if it's in the back, it's just a just that much inconvenient to make it a little difficult. Um, you know, having the the, the ones that are like the gold standard or like those rare like like 1080p or not 1080 like 480p crts or getting those like rca flat screen type R, uh, ones that are usually pretty big so those ones stay at home and then you would also have a small one that you would bring um the classic one too that was very popular were the disney theme ones mm -hmm. that were like mickey mouse Minnie mouse SpongeBob. or something like that spongebob yeah those were super like classic i love when i saw those the obnoxious one though i remember i would tell people like I would still give people their five dollars off when people bring like suit like literally this big one i'm like dude that's not that's not come on pro players hated that they're like i'm just not gonna play with this um 
but it's funny to see like it's like i know like 30 years from now we're all gonna like there's gonna be like a crt museum and we're gonna we're all gonna like look to each other and say man i remember when i had that one like wow and because it's it's true there was so much variety and variability and then you'd have the ones obviously with like if you could get one that was like a, a vcr too it's so like wow now i could watch you know, tapes on there a dvd player too it's like man now it's all in one you know so it was always fun to see the variability and then if you got a crt also prime was the ones that had handles in it that's a game changer too so they had they were little these, these holes i don't know if it was meant to be a handle but they were there and you could just easily hold your crt that was legit too So I guess next up in like the history of uh of Smash and like the history of your like uh career in Smash after after Melee become Brawl but also Project M which if I understand correctly you talked a lot, or you you played a lot of back in the day, right? Yes, yeah. 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 You know, Brawl I didn't really spend much too, much time with. I think a lot of us didn't unless you're Mewtwo King. Um so like I played it because remember what I said at the end of the day, I'm a gamer and I love I love just playing with my friends. So as as jank as Brawl was, I did like it and and we played it, but I never played it competitively. That just I just kind of skipped over and really just continued playing melee. Um, Project M was very exciting when that came out because I think it was what we all had a hunger for is something that was different. Um, but had was like essentially a dlc like wow look at all these other playable characters and so that was um very fun but can you, can you explain day, a little what, really what, super... what project m is for oh yeah yeah, yeah. so so project m I, I don't know necessarily like the fine print of like how it was created per se but it was essentially a modded version of melee um unsanctioned by nintendo as we do many things um and uh it had uh it new characters um new levels um some new mechanics but uh inherently still the same game of melee in that it was more fast paced you could still do wave dashing l canceling all the um, competitive techniques that was lost from brawl so project m came in to kind of save that save the day with that I th how, um, how 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 did it work it was did they mod the properties of the melee physics engine into brawl that's a great question. Okay. I don't know. I don't know exactly how I, I th they like. Think, yeah, that's the part I don't know. I think I think that's how it worked. They tried to recreate the the melee physics engine into brawls like into levels brawl, of roster. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and so you know, you you actually could play Snake and at a competitive level that was actually pretty fun. Uh, you didn't have to deal with the, the the BS of tripping, which was just this random feature in Brawl where you would just be playing and all of a sudden you tripped um and so that was very exciting and in that game I, I made lucas and it was one of the first times i actually played a character um pretty seriously well i guess in ultimate i played king k real pretty seriously um but uh uh and so that was a that was a fun time to explore a new character and i i myself learned new techniques that i otherwise never really learned i learned how to like um double jump cancel and and things like that with uh with lucas in order to and lucas was super fast so that was a lot of fun to to play but even you know that was during the time when, when we started playing in Bloomington, and um, and starting the scene there, and even then it was always still like a side game, you know. Um, at, it got very popular, I think, at, as a scene as a whole, especially when like Armada started playing it pretty seriously as well and doing well. I think he played Ike, um, no, not Ike, he uh, played Pit. Icarus. Pit. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Swedish yeah, sniper. Yeah, yeah. The Swedish sniper. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So he got, you know, and I think that that ballooned for a while, but then I think Nintendo started to bring the hammer down, um, and so that kind of fizzled away, unfortunately. But I think everyone still had a heart for for melee, as we as our scene did as well, and so um, yeah, that's kind of my journey with that. You know, we when we did Full Bloom One, we had Project M as the, the side game, um, I, I shouldn't say side game, but as like the second game, if you will. <laughs> Um, and so we, we did it for a little bit, but then we started to see as well as backroom TO talk of like the feasibility of it just not being practical. Um, uh, and I think the reluctance of the community to actually want to play it. And so we didn't actually bring it back after that. So it was full bloom when we had it. And then after that, we, we had a discontinued. And then we think we just 
once Ultimate came out, we just kind of it just kind of paved the way for that anyway. So you're you because getting... it, it was it would be unheard of to run that many games at once. Yeah. Um, and you know, even when we did do sixty four, we had our sixty four group come in who were diehards, by the way. You know, that was at least more manageable because they were so willing to take it on and to it themselves, and it took such a small portion of our venue that it was like fine. So. It, it was just it would also would have just been logistically very difficult at our scale to do that many games at that high of scale so you're you're getting to the point in like your uh your like life story where you moved to indiana for graduate school yes but i also think yes. this kind of affects uh your uh uh your like relationship with the game and like you you move sort of from like a player to a tournament organizer right yeah 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 so um this you know smash is near and dear to my heart i will never say anything bad about that game and you know even when i hear people say like smash is toxic or whatever i'm like every game is toxic if you look hard enough you'll always find the nastiness of anything competitive anything competitive period there's always going to be a nastiness to it um and at the and and there's a difference also between toxicity and just competition it's okay for people to be competitive and i'm okay with some level of talking shit like it's a competition like people People are playing, especially at the highest level for their livelihood. So I love Smash. I love everything that has brought into my life. And I see the good that has done a lot in a lot of other people's lives, as well as bringing people together. So I played competitively 2006 for maybe two or three years. So 2006, 2007, 2008. Um, unbeknownst to me, Smash kind of went down as well. I didn't realize it. this is all unbeknownst to me. Um, life got busy i got more involved in undergrad and school and all that i did a master's degree and then i decided as we all have decided you know to go to more school because we're all gluttons of punishment, <laughs> of punishment and um and so i said sure what's another five years of my life for a, a piece of paper and so the first time i ever moved away was to go to wonderful blooming in bloomington indiana and that is not that is very sincere i love bloomington also will always have a dear place in my heart um and somewhere along the way i don't know if the algorithms just s pierced into my soul um but i came across a smash documentary in 20 around that time frame mm. and also on my mind so the context also i'm moving with my wife she also got accepted to the program but yes my wife is you know my my partner my 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 number one person in my life at that time but I also wanted friends, you know, I want to build friendships. I want to build a social group, you know, I don't want to just rely on her. And so I was like, how am I going to meet people? And that that is just almost serendipitous that the documentary somehow came across my YouTube or, or however. And I was like, wow, I was blown away. It was like, I, I was, I was in my early twenties, but still I was like already having nostalgia. And I was like, people still, I remember the thought people still play this. Mute King, oh my God, look at all these players. And players I, I didn't even know about. You know, I didn't know about like, and, and this is gonna sound crazy to people who say like, you didn't know about these players, but that's because, and I tell them it's because I go even further before them because like players like Axe, I was like, who is this person playing Pikachu? Like I had no, like, who, what is this? And people were like, wow. So then you were, I remember I was talking to uh, Mike Hayes who doesn't play anymore, I was mm -hmm. talking to him. And I was giving him kind of my life story. He was curious too. And he was like, oh, okay. Cause he understood it. Cause he's been around for a while. And he, when he knew, when I told him, I didn't know about like accent when a documentary came out, he's like, oh, so you were like, like early two thousands. And I was like, oh yeah. He's like, oh yeah. So you kind of missed when like Mango was like super, super big. And I was like, yeah, Mango was like just starting out. And, and like, and I was like, okay. So he was like paying respect to that almost, which I appreciate. He's like, okay, you're like super OG. And I was like, yeah, but I, I you know, but, but, but I always tell people like I fell out of it. So I missed when it kind of peaked for a little bit and then, and then it fizzled out. And then when the smash document came out and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. And so I remember I reached out to my old group and they were like, yeah, like people are still playing. Even I'm starting to get back into it. And I was like, wow. And I, I like dusted off my Smashboards account, logged back in. I, I didn't know any other way. I mean, and so, and and I found, a, found and I posted it and there was an IU thread. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I can't believe this. And apparently like a couple years prior to me coming to IU in 2013, 
there was a small group of people who played, but it died out just like the Smash scene died out as a whole. Um, and then I kind of brought it back and I reached out to those old people and they're like, yeah, I don't really play anymore. And the people that responded, Michael and Sen, they were over at, I think, Teeter Lounge. I think that's where I can't remember what it was exactly. And they said, yeah, me and my buddy play. Let's get together. I met a guy named Nick. Him and I got together um, and we just started playing. We played and we just went into their dorms and we started playing. Um, and that was how I started to make my community there. Um, and um, you know, the main way of getting, of really meeting people then was Facebook. And so we made, we're like, it just kept it. And here's like, I'll take a step back. And here's something I like to say is that a lot of people have great ideas. Less people are willing to implement those ideas. And a lot of the time what they need is a leader to step up or somebody just to say, you know, I'll do, I'll do that. Or I'll, I'll, or like, how about you or delegate? That's a skill. And I took on that role. I was happy to do it. And so as our group grew we're like well why don't we like like make a group on facebook so we did and then what we found out was it was another facebook group and so we said let's just merge our groups and so we all got together and started playing even more and then we started playing at a, uh, at a guy Bolton named bowl in his house uh or his apartment and he lived off campus and so we would do the classic drive over there bring our, our crts and everything and we would play there and then it grew and next thing you know we're at like 15 people or 20 people, then we say, well, why don't we just make this an official thing? So we made a bi-weekly and, and then we made a bi-weekly. And, and then from there, I mean, I don't know, Dom, the rest is history, as you know, I mean, we just kept going from there. Uh, you had the, the, the bi-weeklies, um, when did you, st and, um, uh, I guess either when, when did like Bloomington start like throwing tournaments that like brought other people in indiana or when did you start going to like the other tournaments in indiana the other tournaments in the midwest like how did you how did you like you you talked about like reaching out with the other people in in your town but how did you reach out with the other networks in your region i guess is what i want to know yeah i think it the story is just so crazy because i think um and i say this in the most like place of gratitude is that bloomington smash scene became like the premier place i mean it just did in indiana and in the greater Midwest scene. I mean, we were, we became synonymous, I think, with, dare I say, like Big House. And when you think of like Midwest Smash, you're thinking of Big House, you're thinking of Full Bloom, you're thinking about um, Smash and Splash. Um, that's what you're, what you're thinking about. And, and the way I think we essentially did it was through this building up this is coming back to the grassroots is building up the grassroots and never forgetting your own community first. And so I guess I'll kind of go back to that. And so we started doing the bi-weeklies, 20 people, 30 people. And, and our stories basically was one ba based out of like logistical solving some logistical issues. So it was kind of like, we're too big for this apartment. So then one of our members, Ryan lived in a house which was, I think, two houses down from the place that you lived, I think, in your last year's there, Tom, mm -hmm. on, on, I think, on 3rd, is it 3rd? Third, 3rd right Street, yep. And, and uh, so we moved to that Way house. Way to dox me. 20... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, so, and so we outgrew that, so then we finally brought it to campus because we're like, our houses or the places that we're going are just not viable anymore. So then we moved to another location on campus, outgrew that and then we finally settled and I my understandings are still there today just like huge like 200 person uh, room and then actually the store doesn't end there we it, on campus it was like in the business school yeah we outgrew that and so we rented out the corresponding room next to it and separated the games and I love telling that because that's how big we got that ultimate and people stepping up and I think over a hundred people or 10 and then melee had close to a hundred people attend. Like collectively we had like at times a hundred to 150 people between both games. Mm -hmm. And so it just became like, you guys take that room. We take this room and people were excited enough to step up. So in our own town, we're having on um, every two weeks, almost a hundred people on average attend on any given bi-weekly. Of course, that's going to vary. That became noticed. And now our Facebook page is getting noticed. So again, this is, the context of the time is that was the main way to advertise. And so now our Facebook page is, you know, 
I remember we, we used to keep track of, of like, wow, now we're at a thousand people. Now we're it's, it's like crazy how many people are. And then you're seeing top players like come in. And so we said, okay, you know, tournaments are popping off. Let's do our own tournament. And I remember, I remember Jeremy Wu, who's one of my, like at the, was at that time was like one of my closest buddies there. And he was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> and he's like, that's a lot of work. And he was always like the guy who was like the, the reluctant, like he, he was like, he was like, I'll be here to support it, but man, I don't know, you know, but, <laughs> and he was, he's been there. He was there since day one. Um, and so, you know, we did full bloom one and that when you do a regional tournament that, so that answers your question of, I think how we really, really started to get noticed outside of our community. And so I say regional, regional being the greater state of, of Indiana, and then you're bringing in also maybe some Ohio people too. And what is that? It means you're going to the corresponding Facebook smash pages, smash boards. We were still advertising on smash boards and saying, Hey, we're putting on a tournament. You know, um, and Smash is getting big. This is how many people were expecting. Come on by. And we we did really well. I can't remember today how many people we had at Full Bloom One, but quite a bit. And we had for that time two pretty good players come. I mean, we had um a uh, Dreffen come, who's you know the mid like one of the Midwest gods uh, uh, uh you know OGs. We had Prince Abu come. Um, who was a top, high top level player at that time. I think he might've been top 100 at that time. Oh, yeah. um, uh, we had some people from Kentucky come, top player play. So in, in our first tournament, you know, we had three or four top players, three or four uh, states represented, if not more, who drove, you know, that Midwest drive to our tournament, which was a huge, huge deal. Um, we streamed it, which was also a big deal. And so we got noticed. And, um, after that, we started to secure funding on campus, which I, I, some one of the big things about IU is that there was, there was a lot of access to funding. And then in our next tournaments, we were going to bring some top level players. Um, I guess another key point element to the story was after Full Bloom won, we did a, another tournament. Um, actually, I think it was after Full Bloom. I can't remember if we did Kilroy after Full Bloom 2 or before Full Bloom 2. Yeah, after 2. So full bloom two, we're to bring pay to bring in talent. So we we uh, we paid um, to have Lucky and Axe come in, which I think Axe you when you bring in high level, yeah, that's right. And we were to bring in high level commentators, homemade waffles. Um, that I think also really solidified that we were a serious tournament because if if you're able to bring that level top fifty talent, I don't know Lucky at that Lucky and Axe were probably top twenty at that mm -hmm. time. Um, and top level commentators and have a, a decent stream now you're being noticed now people are watching and now you're bringing in people um from elsewhere because um people at the higher level want to play against lucky and axe they want to play against those top level players so now they're really coming and then after that we, we started to do a fall tournament called kilroy and i think that another um, important aspect of our story is the chicago scene um Ro and um juna who runs uh, melee every day um took notice of our scene and came down from chicago and they were popping off early stages of melee every day who i believe is still going on today and is a huge um broadcaster for the scene mm -hmm. whether you hear that name or not they are behind the scenes doing a lot of these still mm -hmm. a lot of these major tournaments um and they we really combined with them to really help gain notoriety and i learned a lot from Vro. Now I'm not going to get into the whole Vro stuff. I know I know there was some weird stuff that happened with that, but all I'll say is, um, you know, I, I, it, not sharing his role and Juna's role in our development would would be missing a, a key component. Because Vro saw a lot of potential in our scene, and he wanted to be a part of it with having melee every day, be our streamer, um, and so that was really huge. And that was really huge. And Vro was a a tried and true TO, and he showed me a lot of good tips and techniques he showed me how to do a lot of scheduling stuff that i learned directly from him he showed me how to do um um how to seed that was really helpful mm. and so i grew a lot from him which only helped me to enhance the tournaments as well and sorry if you hear my kids in the background they're okay yeah it sounds like a tournament yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. future smash players that's right. That's right. 
uh yeah uh, while 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 we're at a bit of uh, this kind of like uh breaking the conversation uh the Shirley, you want to read that latest, uh, uh, that, that comment about Louise Mains? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, uh, Chameleon35, this is such a fun segment, I can't wait to learn about Louise Mains. <laughs> Louis, the people want to know. The people want to know about your mains. Who was the, the person that said that? Uh, Chameleon35, oh, okay, am I okay. saying that right? Yeah. No, no, I thought it was, I thought I heard a different tag that I, I recognize. I don't, I don't know who that oh, is. okay. Um. So, so in melee, it's um, so I solo Sheik. Um, in ultimate, it's King K rule. Um, in PM, I played Lucas um, and Sheik as well. But I didn't like playing Sheik as much because I I liked that I could play a, a new character. But I'll be lying, I'm such a scrub. Like when I started to lose with Lucas, I would just go back to Sheik and and at, at, at people of my my skill level, I would end up winning. But I felt bad doing that because, like, man, I want to try to play Lucas. But um, so I tried to play Lucas as much as I could. So I like to say that in PM I played Lucas. Uh, sixty four, I played Kirby. Brawl, I didn't really. I mean, uh, in Brawl, I did. I did try to play it seriously. And when I did play it seriously, I played Wario. Um, and I think Wario ended up being a pretty good character, actually. Um, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I, I think. You know, I don't. I'm, I wonder if I'm missing any. Uh. Jigglypuff and Ultimate. You, yeah. Or Jigglypuff, Ultimate. Jigglypuff and uh, Wii U, yeah. Wii U, Jigglypuff and Wii U. The DS version, I didn't really. Man, that was just nobody really played that. So wow, uh, bring back Smash Run. You know, we did do a DS. A DS. Um, everyone was so hyped on that that we did play a little bit of. I think we played it like the first week it came out. We did one tournament and realized that this is this is just like we're like. We're all doing this playing with each other like standing like just on the couch and just like no hype whatsoever. <laughs> we won. I won. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. Chad is respecting Smash Run, the best part of Smash 3DS. I love that. Um What would you say is is what I I guess what draws you to a character hmm. to potentially eventually main? Uh even outside of just make good combos as someone who doesn't know smash well, that a, well at all no that's the thing like, but like, you, at, at the start you don't know combos so you are just drawn by yeah. the factors that's a great question actually i i think but i will say that i think at the early stages especially when you're not exposed to the competitive nature of it you are you are maybe you may be just fine if you're not exposed to the competitive nature of it but you're wanting to win you find a character that you kind of like that does something kind of jank that you exploit to your other friends and then you just keep doing that thing so maybe kirby mm -hmm. is because like oh i could just suck people in and then just toss them off the stage something like that and so i like kirby or you do the you know i don't know kirby's up b moves official name but like that movie move you could just like keep doing the people and they don't know how to get out of it you know especially at the very like friendly level and like oh this thing hits me like three times. I can't. I can't get away. You know, stuff like that. And so, I think that's probably why I probably found joy in Kirby. I don't know how I landed at Sheik. Well, I you previously said love, Ocarina but, of Time was like your favorite video. I was game yeah, game, probably right? just because. Yeah, I mean that's like literally my number one favorite game of all time across all genres, is Ocarina of Time, and so it, it probably was just that aspect. I do kind of have a memory of thinking it was cool that you could be essentially two different characters. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and then, then play just, maybe Zelda? Just, I don't, not seriously. No, okay. I don't think so. I just thought it was kind of neat that you could do that. Um, when, when, when I, then, when I was a, a turn, when I lived in Maryland and was going to tournaments out there, the guy who ran the tournaments, uh, shouts out to Ram to, to, to Rambler, uh, was like the number two hmm. Zelda player in America, which is like a very low bar to clear. Like a not chic but yeah. a Zelda player in melee, but oh my god, I yeah. used to love watching him play Zelda. All right, keep sorry, keep going. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, and that's that's what melee is. Is if you're going against the number two Zelda player in the world in 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 America, you said yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're probably gonna lose because um, because that person has gone to that level because they've mastered that character and they know the matchups so well. And that doesn't go the other way around. Nobody has Zelda practice. Nobody. So that's why, like, I, I think DK, the, the era that we're in with DK is a great one. 
I don't think it'll last. Um, it's just because right now people are real life. People have, people have slept on DK. Somebody has been grinding it out, or these players have been grinding it out, and 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 finding all the things that people don't really know. And people at the higher level are going to learn what those things are and exploit them back. Um, because at the end of the day, like, uh, like it, it's it, it can be hard with those types of characters. Um, and so, it, it there's a lot of truth that when like when people play like a seemingly against a seemingly bad character, I don't make somebody feel bad because they lost. It's because if you don't know the matchup and the other person does. You're you're at a big disadvantage, no matter how bad that character is. So I would be scared to play the number two best Zelda player in America because they probably know exactly how to play against Sheik. They probably know exactly what I'm going to try to do, and they know the things that don't work. And I'm going to attempt them and get freaking, um, you know, that s- s- sparkling kick every time. Yeah. <laughs> huh. All right. So I went off on your thing, but but no, yeah, those no. are my main characters. I, I think that was the last point of it. Yeah. Um, love for Kirby in the chat as always. <laughs> Everyone a lot loves of, Kirby. A lot of Kirby love. Uh, hey, I mean, we might see an era where you know, I when DK started to make this this comeback, I was kind of looking. I literally pulled up a tier list and I was like, what character has there not really been a era for? And I think I think like Ness. I mean, Hungry Box played a good Ness, but not like. Nothing that like blew people away. Hey, Jim Jim I think Flim Ness Flim. is a character. What's that? Jim Jim Flim Flam. <laughs> so like N- Ness. That's a that's a Ness man. Ness from, is a yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't has not really had a big exposure. Um, I Leffen's Mewtwo did a lot of good work, and oh, there's yeah. another player who played Mewtwo for. He's an OG. I'm forgetting his name. Is he's from the Arizona team. Ta- Taj. Uh, uh, yes, Taj. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Taj is an OG. Um, and then obviously Leppin did a lot of good work with Mewtwo, showed his, showed Mewtwo's capability. But like, um, you know, uh, and then back in the day, Disha Nintendo um, did a lot of good work with Bowser. Um, but that was a long time ago, but I don't think people forgot about that. So I think if somebody came out with Bowser, it, you know, it, it would be cool because it's been a while. But there, DK never really had a strong era unless you go all the way back to like Green Ranger. Green Ranger. Um, um, but like Ness, I don't think ever had an era of like, oh my gosh, look, look at what Ness can do. Kirby didn't really, never really had. There's a player called Triple R that's really good with Kirby, but nobody's really popped off with Kirby and has shown like Kirby can actually be really good. Um, Mewtwo King has messed, has has been known to mess around with Pichu. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm sorry I'm I'm rattling off now. I'm, and the last one I think is like Game and Watch even had an era with um, uh, shoot I forget his name, um, oh Curb, Curb um uh, Q E R B, and uh you know he, he has some good um combo videos, um but he's really the only one I I can think of. So it'll be fun to see what else could happen in the next couple of years. Louis, can you talk about like some of like the 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 peaks you've had as like running tournaments, like some of the best, uh, uh, some of like the best moments, uh, not like in front of the controller, but like from behind the desk for the tournaments you ran, like some of the heights you achieved running tournaments. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I was just talking to Jack about this. Um, Jackzilla, we were talking about the... Jackzilla. Yeah, yeah, uh, we. we... We we actually have been talking like every other month or so. We'll have get hop on a call about random stuff and oh, cool. uh, mostly about the future of full bloom, and um, and uh, <laughs> he just like quickly dropped on me. It was like somehow we were talking about full bloom five, and he was like, "Yeah, full bloom five was good. Full bloom four was better." <laughs> it's like really, I didn't know you felt that way. He's like, "Yeah, it was just better, you know." And I, and I and I kind of see what he was coming from. I mean, it was all good to me, and and I could kind of see what he's saying, but I think. And, and I'm not saying that it was necessarily better, but what I'm going to say is the memory I have with it is related to Full Bloom 4. Mm-hmm. And maybe it was because at Full Bloom 4, and also because at Full Bloom 5, I did kind of step away from the reins even more so in Austin and then really took it over even at Full Bloom 5. But at Full Bloom 4, it really felt like we were a well-oiled machine. And I could just... And I literally sad in like the back couple rows 
and was watching the tournament and there's some pictures that I have from that and I could take a deep breath and like like I know ultimate was being run by the most capable TOs that I've known I know melee was currently being run I know the stream was like like every next match was ready to go till the end of the day uh, we were on schedule and you know check-in desk was being managed we were just such a well-oiled machine um and i could just like sit and and actually enjoy my own tournament and that you know i helped put on and actually watch the matches and i remember jack back to jack came up to me during that moment that i was trying to like live in that moment and sat next to him and he's like oh yeah you're just, you're enjoying he said something along those lines he's like this is what you should be doing right here is like sitting down and like just appreciating that and I was like, yeah, it's really nice. Like to see, like, this is all just happening right now. Like, and I can actually sit and appreciate it. And it was just so nice to, to do that. So to me, that was a high, not because of full bloom four per se, and not because of like full bloom five was, and, and, or, or not because like full bloom five was going to be the next one. And like, I thought of that as being the most pivotal thing, or maybe that because that was going to be my last tournament. I really just have this strong memory of full bloom four sitting down and just really appreciating it and appreciating this team that Dom, you and I, and everyone else put together. And we were all in together. And and it was just this smooth thing that we put together. And sitting there in gratitude was just a beautiful moment. What year was that? That would have been... So, okay, so Full Bloom 5 was when I was on postdoc. So that would have been... Full Bloom 5 would have been 2018. Uh, no, that would have been 2019. So 2018 was when um, Full Bloom 4 was, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, so many facts. So long ago. Feels like so long ago. <laughs> was, was Full Bloom 3 the first year in the alumni hall with the, uh, with the pipe organ? Yeah, and that was a one day tournament. One day tournament. That's <laughs> yeah. Crazy. And I remember. Crazy, but I remember people were down. We had a lot of representation there, top 100 representation. And I remember talking to some people. People like, coming hey, in from Europe. Europe. People came in from Europe for a one-day tournament. Yeah. Leffitt and Ice came in from Europe for a one-day tournament. Like, if that doesn't speak to, like, just let that settle in for anybody who has any remote understanding of, like, just tournaments in the fighting game community, period. Like, some somebody, two top like i think probably top 20 players in the world mm -hmm. flew out to america indiana the midwest you know bloomington they don't know indiana they barely know america and <laughs> they came in they came in on some long ass flight for a one-day tournament that's how name recognition how much our scene grew by just full bloom three and that was that that to me is like speaks volumes right there is that left and ice came to full bloom through a one day tournament why they were probably attracted because of all the top level representation but why did the top level re representation come because we put our name on the map who won who won that year full bloom three was wait let, let's uh, let's let's go from full bloom one let's go from the first full bloom full bloom one is prince abu prince abu jigglypuff yeah, uh, full, yeah, Jigglypuff, yeah. Um, full Bloom 2 is Lucky. That, Fox. and I just want to say that Lucky versus uh, Lucky versus Axe, Fox versus Pikachu Grand Finals is probably yeah, my was, favorite set nice. of Melee I've ever watched from Full Bloom yeah, 2. That's that's my number yeah, one. Homemade Waffles is commentating. Homemade Waffles it, so is commentating. Better. It goes to game, it goes yeah. to, to game uh, 10. It goes to game 5, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I it goes so, to yeah. game 5 and game 5, like the Grand Finals reset. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> it was good. And then uh, Full Bloom 3, I I, I think it's Hungrybox. Mm. Um, and then Full Bloom 4 is Zane and Full Bloom... Uh, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, Full Bloom 4 is Zane. I think Full Bloom 5 is Hungrybox again? Man, I can't remember my own tournament. Somebody look this up. I need to know right now. Sure, I know. Surely I know you're going to lick Wikipedia and look up the, the Full yeah. Bloom uh, results? Full Bloom... Full Bloom 2024 is Zane, and he was talking about doing the three-peat. So I think Zane won twice. Sure. So Zane won. I think it's I think it's it's um Full Bloom 3 is Hungry Box. Full Bloom 4 is What what year is yeah. this? 
Uh, full bloom three would have been. It should just show up. Full bloom. On chat. Where's my chat Come at? Come chat. Chat. Chat's here for the culture. <laughs> they, they they less know. Uh, they they less know uh, esports. You know. Are we, we're asking who won in singles. Yeah, in singles. In melee singles. Melee singles. Hun yeah, hungry box team liquid. Hungry box in one. Full bloom, bloom three. Three. Yes. Okay. Melee. And then yep. Then full bloom four. I, I got it right here. S fat. That's oh no 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 he didn't win that. Hungry box also in full bloom four. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay okay. Hungry yeah. box. Then full bloom five is Zane. Full bloom twenty twenty four is Zane. Okay so. Zane has won it twice. So th there's been a Jigglypuff three peat and Zane's going for the Marth three peat. There you go. Yeah. You um, go. what was uh I remember. The, mo the moment I felt that tournament was on the map when, like, my, my friends from grade school were texting me when uh, Mango played AMSA on stream. And they're like, this tournament's fucking oh, amazing, man. That's five? Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I just said it was fire. That's oh, full fire. Boom, That's um, full that would be four. full boom four. Yeah. That's full boom four. Yeah. Yeah, I forget that Hungrybox won twice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, well, Hungrybox twice, Zane twice. That's interesting. But uh, Hungrybox played Mango. At full bloom four, so full. I think that's why like Jack, you know, likes um, full bloom four a lot because like um, you know we had some we had some good sets. We had uh, Leffen and Mango, I believe, played at mm -hmm. full bloom four, um, and then Mango, you know, is in is in grand finals, and you know everyone loves Mango. So Hung like that's Hungry why Hungrybox and Mango it, is literally a rivalry from the Smash documentary, and we, you had that at right. your tournament, right? Yeah. Right. And so that that was like an amazing. Uh, it was it was a good, you know. We always measured. I think any tournament measures their their um, reputation in the the global Smash tournament series as who was at your tournament. Yeah. And so I remember we had this thing that Jack loved putting together these quick like advertisements, and he put together this like punch card list thing of like for full bloom four of like all the top 100 and he would like cross off as we had more people come and it was like like if you have more than half the the top 100 there like you are like a major tournament like you mm -hmm. elevate to a major tournament so that ultimately is what dictates your notoriety as a tournament because if you have 500 people there but none of them are top level players it, it doesn't carry as much weight but when you have top level people there then it, it the competition level just gets higher so that's why it's like, from a tournament organizer standpoint, it's a huge bummer when somebody bails. Mm -hmm. And I get it. I'm not shitting on top players who bail. Everybody has their reasons. People get sick or whatever. Flight, but from yeah. the TO perspective, from the TO perspective, that's very stressful. It's stressful on who who now attendees might not come. It's stressful on the seating. Um, it's very stressful on the seating. I should double down on that one. It's very stressful for seating. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's a lot of effort to attain top level players and hope that they still come. <laughs> you know, it's like people come, it's like watching, wanting to see their favorite celebrity, you know? An another. Can I... uh, oh, go for it. Go for it, Shirley. Oh, I was going to ask, um, perhaps off topic, um, somewhat, but what is the story behind the name Full Bloom? <laughs> Uh, I think that original name idea came from the mouth of Yamin, um, Yamham. Yamham. When we were all just brainstorming ideas, I want to give credit to him. I, I'm like almost 90% sure that those words were uttered from his mouth, that he said, what about full bloom? And I think we were all pretty much, it maybe came down to like a couple other choices, but I think that like it all like they all have bloom in the clouds. In part. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like okay, it's bloom, blooming tin. It's full bloom. Like our scene has grown. Um, it's it just, also a it's, springtime it's, it's, tournament. It, yeah, it's yeah. springtime tournament. So it hit on so many oh, levels. Okay. It was the idea of it of of also of it being so wholesome of just like it's our scene like coming to like coming to its own. You know, it just hit on so many aspects of it that were like that's it, that's the one. So, and then the lotus flower just. I don't know. I think I think when we started looking for logos, we're just I think we're just gam. Just like, well, okay, what flowers do we like, and that, that go with you know the 
the aesthetic and then and then uh, i think the colors um you know we we went with the red and black initially and then that kind of then when we partnered with smash gg or like making branding for our compendium and our merch they said hey we got this new color that we're trying to do pink and that's what really popped off i think for a lot of people resonated we sold a lot of jackets Hoodies. um that's some, that's some, by the way that's some behind the scenes stuff like those jackets popped off like, yeah people loved the pink people like from the behind we made a lot of money on that so on the behind the scenes stuff when you partner with and i don't know if it's any different now at the time when we partnered with smash gg and it's not even called smash gg anymore is it right start gg else. start gg yeah so you 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 partner with them they they do a lot of the work and so obviously they take a bigger cut but you're bringing in you know the tournament you're using their site their site's getting advertisement they're bringing in merch um ideas they're putting the logos on it and you get we got a certain percentage of that and we got a lot of money from from selling the full bloom like pink jackets and those, and that aesthetic became very popular and we kept doing variations of it as as dom is demonstrating right there yeah i'm wearing um, and so yeah so so we got that, that aesthetic got people really like that um and i remember seeing on stream stream chat too people saying like i love the full literally people saying like i love the full bloom aesthetic like our overlays you know the pink and 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 the, and the flower like people really liked it i think it was kind of a just like a different contrast it was a different contrast from what was typically done it was very esports of like maybe that was mary like Black just like really cyan. in your face yeah 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 and like even that's making me think about when we launched one of our trailers and i think it was full bloom three where we took a very different approach and one of my favorite trailers to this day is the full bloom three trailer where um it's a i don't I don't know if we can show it here but like where it's if the camera is looking at a whole bunch of crts and we have somewhere over the rainbow playing um and then it morphs into the tv of clouds and in the clouds we start seeing the names of the top level players who are coming and in the clouds are the the characters doing their like the name that comes shows the players doing the, a, a combo um, and then it pans out to just the sound of birds tweeting and showing a picture of the IMU. That's it. Okay. And a trailer in that time, current time, was just like, doom, 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 this weekend, Smash Tournament, look at all these crazy players coming. And it was so cool to, it just matched, it, it, our aesthetic was like, I think, very different for the time. It's, it's, it's crazy thinking about, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this when you're talking about, uh, uh, how like the top players coming to your tournament is like uh really, really like a uh, like the 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 best like advertisement you have you know that like right. so like so and so people from the top fifty, um, and it's crazy how like on all ends of the of the spectrum like full bloom four full bloom five some of those tournaments they were real big events you had players coming in from Europe you had players like from the the like the like old old school players uh like veterans like some of the gods of melee um i think what's crazy now is you can say like like ludwig and slime are like big youtubers you know and they like yeah, i i i um so my day job is i work as a psychologist at ucsd and i work with a lot of young students for the incoming cohort was born in 2006 i believe 2000 really and oh <laughs> yeah and um i was talking to a client one time and he knows he knew ludwig from who ludwig is today like Boys? he has no channel he does right right exactly and i'm like uh and and this client in particular he knew a little bit about my smash background mm -hmm. and i was like i knew I, I didn't i never i'm not saying i knew ludwig but ludwig came to our tournament and and was there before he like really popped off yeah and he was like he was doing, really he was, doing, was like yeah he was doing was, like sketch comedy on the sketches on the live stream yeah yeah and i pulled up the um trial one that they did yeah at full bloom three and i was like look <laughs> look this is the tournament that i did and this is there's, and he's like oh my gosh there he this client was like oh my god he literally was like oh my gosh there he is i was like yes i was like yeah ludwig used to just like casually come to our tournaments when he was like you know still doing that kind of stuff and making a name for himself um and ludwig you know and slime are 
are like people who I I love the way they talk about Smash. They talk about Smash in the way I talk about Smash. Yeah, like, they will. They always have a heart for it. Never say a bad thing, and you know it's the best community in the world. Which I love. I love that they're consistent about that. Um, and you know they're always trying to give back to the community, especially Ludwig and the way he does that. Mm-hmm. So I I love I love that he he hasn't forgot his roots. You know his grassroots, which I love. Um, and so yeah, it's crazy to see like we've had these names kind of pass through, you know, and even people like that are still popular today, but like have passed through, but even more popular, you know, people like Hungrybox and people Homemade like Mingo, who, yeah, people who are people who were in the past were OGs, people who maybe weren't as big. These people have passed through our tournament, like that. That I think is is an incredible feat, you know. And then the other other highlights of like one of the things i love telling people even to this day dom was that that those people you met from south america yeah who came and um, to our tournament that blows my mind too like that that was a, you know when you asked that question earlier of another like i that was a high for me to think that we had so much reach that people from south america i forget what country came like panama to our tournament it was something like yeah, that panama like or they Venezuela came or something yeah yeah, they came to our tournament. Like that blew my mind. That blew my mind. Don't tell me video games don't bring people together. Like that's like amazing that that happened. Um, yeah. So that kind of stuff is just it's just crazy. That that tournament had had the 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 players from from like uh, Central South America. It had AMSA from Japan. It had Leffen from Europe. Japan. Yeah. Canada. Japan, um, Canada. Sweden. Japan, Canada, Europe, yeah, uh, um, South America, uh, yeah, we were an international. I like to say we were an international tournament. Yeah, you know, we peaked at I think thirty thousand viewers. That's um, right. You know, which, you know, so and we had, you know, I think almost six hundred people in attendance. I think I, I love rattling those numbers on. <laughs> it's great. And at the Midwest, we weren't in like easy accessible like San Diego or L.A. Our or drive Chicago to the airport. Or, yeah. Yeah, right. You know, so, and and I just think that speaks volumes, and it speaks to also the Smash community that we're willing to support it. You know that that this might be a little tangential, but like thinking about that era, that period of time when we were, I think it might have been Full Bloom Four, where um, I don't forget what the tournament series came and booked on our day, uh, last minute booked on our day. Two GG Civil War and we had. Yes, yeah. yes. Yep. And the Yeah, Smash talk about this community. is this is my favorite. This is my favorite yeah. uh, memory. Talk about this. So you remember the, the specific name. So we had our tournament. You look, for anybody who knows anything about TOing, we start planning for full bloom. We take like a couple months off. And we start planning like eight months, eight, ten months before the next tournament. At, at least at the smallest level we do. Um and we're announcing a day probably i think i think we officially make it known to the public um and i emphasize public because in the to back room we're coordinating i'm coordinating with big house i'm coordinating with don't park on the grass the I'm to, the to back Genesis. room is is like yes it's like a like explain the to back room the to back room is basically all the top to figureheads trying to organize the calendar year schedule so that way we're not overlapping on each other. We're creating enough space between each tournament so that way, you know, top players can rest and then likely go to the next tournament. Because even if you do a tournament like not on the same day, you want to create at least a few weeks later so that way they're willing to go to it because the top players mm-hmm. need to rest. So we're trying to organize that as a team. And so in the TO back room, all right, we got these dates. All right, we're we're gonna stick with, you know, April. Okay. Um, Genesis January, you know. So we got that solidified, and then you're, you're you're getting approval from all the major TOs. Okay, we're good. You know, there's no there's no nobody stepping on each other's toes. We're trying to work together, and then we make it public by Big House. I think is when we throw our first ad out. Like so that's a Big House October, right? So we're that's four probably six seven months before the actual tournament. Genesis, we throw out a, a trailer, so we pay big money to throw the trailer out at Genesis. So now we're four months out. So it's widely known now, the TO backroom, two major ads at two major tournaments that everyone who knows Smash knows. They've it's seen it. We've already probably had top players registered. We have a lot of people already registered. 
And then I think, I want to say like a month before maybe, mm-hmm. a major brand who is more business-like, not in the TO chat, decides they want to run a, 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 a tournament with a huge pot um, to uh, at the same time as the czars. And, uh, you know, as a TO, highly stressful, you know. And I, so it was 2GG, yeah, is what it yep. was. And so... And so I immediately like start going back room, talking to them, like, hey, you know, what's going on? How do we, how do we make this work? Like, and they're they're essentially saying like, you know, we, you know, sorry, you know, and like originally I think they were just like, we have to keep going. And I'm just trying to be like nice about it. And then we we have uh, the like the biggest social media push I've ever seen for a tournament series. Um, everyone. Like everyone is coming out, top players, legacy people. I remember wife comes out. He has a tweet that says like, "I've worked for big corporate America for something for like ten for like few years, and I'm tired of it." This reminds me of this. I stand with full bloom. That became a hashtag. Like I stand with full bloom. Grassroots top players were like, it would just simply tweet out like, "I'm not going to that. I'm going to full bloom." You know, it's not always about money. It's not always about, you know, pop bonuses. Like, I'm going to full bloom. Everyone retweeting our brand, retweeting our hashtag. It was so beautiful. Um, And so when that happened, um, I got those people in charge of those other tournament series reached back out to me and they said, hey, you know, we're seeing the impact. You know, it's impacting us too. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run ultimate and we're going to send you guys a pop bonus or something like that. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. And so we 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 then reposted it as a collaboration just to show like, hey, we've resolved things. There's no ill will. So we said, all right, they're gonna run ultimate. They still have to stick with their day because they did have that that um thing. And they and, and it was out of respect also is because they knew that melee was our main thing. It always has been. It's not a secret. Mm-hmm. Ultimate, we 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 did bring in some names. You know that, but melee was always our big thing. And so they said, we'll still do ultimate. We won't run melee and we'll, we'll, we'll send you guys some money. So they sent us money and we, and we said, sure. And we'll market your, yours too. So we did. And that I think was like a way to resolve that. And, but that was the biggest, that was a beautiful moment of like the community really standing up for us. Cause you talked about whether it's like the, the OG players or whether it's like Ludwig and slime or like in this scenario, what's, it sounds like what's very important to you is like always remembering that like the roots of this game is is playing playing at your friend's house. You're just doing that right. at like a very large scale. Yeah. Right, and not not losing touch of that, you yeah. know. And and I go back to that clip I saw of Mango of like even him at the highest level, he probably makes a lot of money now. Like, you know, he 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 still is in touch with that of like just like let's grab a drink. Like, let's order some pizza. How about we stop and just like have some pizza and eat? Like how about we play like, you know, uh, Mario Kart for a little while and then we'll come back to Melee. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. but now it's just like, just like Melee, you know, let's just play, play until we're good, you know. While we're winding down shortly, do you got any uh, questions uh, uh, for Louie that you have? Um, no, I, I, I think the questions that most, most of the questions that came up, I... <laughs> I've, I've I've asked. Yeah, as um, as as the non Smash player, but the person who, you you you're the you're the person on the panel here who knows folklore, but not Smash. But you've heard a lot of Smash folklore, so to, so yeah. to say. I you know maybe this is backtracking too much, but um, I was curious. Kind of a two part sub question. In a sense, what is a wave dash? <laughs> as a as a as a as a broader spectrum aspect, um, how would one learn to wave dash? Essentially, like what mm, what 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 is the process of like? Oh wow! I what is that? Oh, it's a it's a wind blow scrim. Like, well, how do you do that? And like, how would one practice these combos? How how does one grind? <laughs> how, I still how don't know. does one I grind? <laughs> I still don't know. Wait, you you all haven't told me what that term is. I don't know what that term is. What? So I think Wimblow Scrim? Scrim is essentially the, the chat a, just made it up. <laughs> it's a it's a parody of a combo name. They're making fun of how melee players talk. Yeah. 
It's like, is that, yeah. Oh, oh, me, is that is that the joke? Like, yeah. As someone who does oh. not, Louis over here, like, I want to learn how to whip a scrim. Levels. No, new As someone who does not no. smash, whip, wave dash, and wimblow scrim mean okay. the same thing to I, me. I think I think it's our, and it's I kind of a reference got to wombo combo wrong. I thought that's what it was. Louis, do you know? Do you know Glup Shido? Do you know? Do you know the Glup Shido? Okay, it's not a Glup Shido thing, dog. No, 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 no but it, but it, it, it's kind of like Glup. It's kind of like Glup Shido. Is that a Tumblr post? It's yeah. Yeah, where it's like every like, Star Wars well, fan looks at like one alien in the background who appears for one second and goes, "That's Glup Shido. He's my favorite character." It's kind of like Wimblow Scrim. I think kind of like is is like Glup Shido. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> you have to pick the most obscure character to sound like like you're you're interesting. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so so I mean, this is not going to be a very exciting thing to describe. So I'm gonna unless just you love Airdog because. <laughs> So in the game, uh, I am I'm hearing myself describe it to you, and it's just you know, so boring. So, um, but I, so I'm just gonna say it, and it's gonna not elevate this conversation at all. So in the game, you can jump, and in the game, you can also dodge. Uh huh. Okay. If you do that fast enough and push it in a direction, your character looks like they're sliding. Okay. What that does is it allows you beyond normal movement to act out of any sort of action much quicker and makes your movement a lot faster. As if to say you, you your character has like start up and cool down frames when they run. Correct. But not when they wave not when they wave dash into the ground. Correct. So okay. I, I don't feel like going farther into it than that, but that is what it exactly is an answer to your question. It is the combination of both jumping, air, uh, do air dodging in a direction that allows uh, creates the animation of you sliding, and allows you to move and act faster. And okay. how do you, and how do you practice? How how yeah how 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 would how would one learn to wave dash and how would one I, how does one grind on a multiplayer game? I guess is also partially my question. Yeah, I mean, I could, I'll take you to my my room in high school where I just sat down <laughs> on the floor. And just like play the CPU and would just practice what I saw in combo videos over and over again. Mm, if you combo wanted, videos. I, the technique, the technique I, I, I practiced to learn how to wave dash was I always tell people who want to learn is practice with the characters that are easier to do it with. And Luigi. so I tell them to practice with Luigi. Yep. Yeah, start with Luigi and then work your way from there. Um, and so, you know, that's that's what I tell people. So. Again, a direct answer to the question that's kind of boring answer is like, if you want to learn how to wave dash, start with Luigi. If you want to grind, um, I mean, in current times, it would be you can get on Slippy, which is our online version of playing against other people worldwide. Oh, fun. Okay. When you were watching those combo videos, was YouTube even around then? Uh, barely. Yeah, barely. So the, the like OG, OG, OG videos would be um, Bomb Soldier as falco playing falco those are like the og videos yeah and, and then also wow. um like dbr so uh, is that DBR bomb, bomb soldier doing that. like 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 shine pillar combos to outcast is that a yes. video yeah okay 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 yes yes those are exactly those videos okay. those videos blew my mind <laughs> i was like what is this this game is insane yeah I thought those get the, like those were doctored videos. Like <laughs> it's like how is this possible? Uh, we've hit uh two hours, Louis. Um, of course we we've we've talked for a while and we could keep talking forever, but I guess I want to leave it on. Is there anything, uh, you want to mention about melee that Shirley and I haven't like thought to ask you or wouldn't know to ask you? Hmm. See. I think, I think, well, well, let me, let me say there's two things. So I guess the answer to the question would be that um, I made reference to earlier is that if you want to have a scene grow, you, you, a lot of people have great ideas, but less people are willing to implement those ideas. So don't wait for somebody else to do the idea that you have. Try to start doing it yourself, build a team and delegate those tasks. Um, that's what we did. That's what a lot of scenes do. And you can have your own scene. So that's that's what I'll say. 
But the last thing I'll say, the very last thing I'll just say, Dom, thank you for having me. And Dom, I mean, like, we're talking about this, this journey that I went on, but you were so much part of that journey, Dom. I'm glad that you and I have a level of relationship that we do today. I know we don't talk at all very, very much often, but you're a person like that I will always remember as part of that portion of my life. And, you know, you, you were so integral to, to all of it, to your, your eagerness, your willingness, you were a friend, you and I hung out outside of smash, which I think, and I, and I sincerely mean like to me that as what means like we were actually friends that our relationship persisted even beyond smash but like your commitment your 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 you your public speaking your your you know um announcing you know those final matches like you when i think of full bloom i think about you all right all right for the people watching this who are like the 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 people who watch folkwise all the time one one last question because it's the origin of folkwise <laughs> Can you talk about Panel with the Pros? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So Panel with the Pros was a way for us to secure funding at the university because the university is, which I, I love, was all about trying to support clubs with funding. And it was student-driven, too. You just have to make a proposal. But the key factor, and which is a, a very legitimate factor, is how do students benefit from this? And so there has to be a learning component. And so we said, we're going to bring top players in and we're going to have them interview. We're going to interview them and have them um, talk about their careers, talk about how they got to where they're at, advice that they want to give to uh, upcoming players. And we told the board that was doing the funding that like most of the player base that's going to come to this are IU students. Um, and so they award us that funding. And so during our break, we had a separate dedicated hour where we interviewed the top players and Dom facilitated those conversations and uh he did a great job at it and after the first time i did panel with the pros and like interviewed the top players i i went off stage and i went to alex and robin and i said i want to do this with folklore professors and that is seriously <laughs> like that's seriously where it started i i, sh I shit you not chat that is where it started that's great. That's <laughs> and now beautiful. we're going back to gamers now we're back and now we're back to louis of all gamers that's right <laughs> So Louis really was the perfect person to have for this inaug inaugural second pilot. If I can get sentimental, yes, Louis is the the perfect person for this inaugural screen <laughs> of of gamer role history. Man, I think that not a better place to to call it than that, Shirley. I think that that wraps everything. Three years of this show up pretty well. Uh. Everybody in chat, you know what to do. Thank you, everyone, for spamming the gif of my face, by the way. But uh, there's uh, <laughs> before <laughs> that was when Louie was talking about me. But before Louie goes, uh, I, I, I want to say thank you uh, to Louie, not just for getting me into, uh, you know, getting me so deep into Smash and getting me into Twitch. But, yeah, people are figuring this out. I want to say thank you. And I want chat to say thank you by dropping ladders in the chat for Louie. Yeah, there we go. Ladders in the chat for Louis, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for talking. Uh, uh, thank you for talking uh, sm your history with Smash, the, the history of Smash in the state of Indiana, and somehow the the the, the, the beginnings of Folkwise. Louis, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Quotes, 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 quotes